Elon Musk and Sam Altman are feuding again, and I don't really want to go too deep into the drama, but at the same time, there's a couple interesting implications from what Elon is claiming and also Sam Altman's counterclaims, and Apple is right in the middle of the battle. Let's start here. This was really the original tweet that kicked it all off. Hey, Apple App Store, why do you refuse to put either X or Grok in your must-have section when X is the number one news app in the world and Grok is number five among all apps? Are you playing politics? What gives inquiring minds want to know? And then he goes on to reply, and why is ChatGPT literally in every list where you have editorial control? And what he's really talking about is ChatGPT being a featured app in the App Store. And of course, that drives so much distribution for ChatGPT. And because X isn't there or Grok isn't there, they lack that additional distribution on top of the organic App Store results. He goes on to say he's going to be taking legal action against Apple. Apple is behaving in a manner that makes it impossible for any AI company besides OpenAI to reach number one in the App Store, which is an unequivocal antitrust violation. X AI will take immediate action. And Immediately, by community notes, he was proven wrong. Readers added context. January 2025, DeepSeek reached number one overall in the App Store. Just one month ago, July 18th, Perplexity also reached number one overall in India's App Store. Both of these occurred after the OpenAI Apple partnership announced on June 10th, 2024. And so in what seems like forever ago, if you remember, Apple and OpenAI announced a partnership in which ChatGPT will be the default LLM for Apple devices. And since then, Apple and OpenAI haven't really worked together all that much, but of course, Apple's editorial team who chooses which apps to feature featured ChatGPT. Sam Altman's rebuttal to this, this is a remarkable claim given what I have heard alleged that Elon does to manipulate X to benefit himself and his own companies and harm his competitors and people he doesn't like. And he even linked to an article showing where he got that information from. He continues, I hope someone will get counter discovery on this. I and many others would love to know what's been happening, but OpenAI will just stay focused on making great products. And then it really started to go downhill from there. Elon Musk replying to this post said you got 3 million views on your BS post you liar far more than I've received on many of mine despite having 50 times your follower count Sam counters once more will you sign an affidavit which is basically a legal statement stating something that you are verifying to be true and there are legal consequences if you lie in an affidavit so he says will you sign an affidavit that you have never directed changes to the X algorithm in a way that has hurt your competitors, or helped your own companies, I will apologize if so. Then somebody asks Grok, who's right? And based on verified evidence, Sam Altman is right. Musk's Apple antitrust claim is undermined by apps like DeepSeek and Perplexity reaching number one in 2025. Look, when you start having to ask AI to verify or validate truth, I think you're starting to get into murky water. That's not necessarily what they're great at. Plus, they can be prompted in certain ways to give the answer you want. Plus, of course, they're non-deterministic, so you may get different answers depending on when you ask. I'll show you that in a moment. But of course, they went to their respective competitors' AI systems and started asking who's more trustworthy, which... What does that even mean? This really seems like two toddlers fighting in the playground to me. It's so absurd and it's such a waste of time. But of course, I just want to show you one more thing and then we're going to move on. So Elon Musk asked ChatGPT who's more trustworthy and it says Elon Musk. Great. Stephen Smith, who I know, says not what mine says, asked the same question, who's more trustworthy, Sam Altman. So it just goes to show what is the point of this? What is the point of asking? It's fine to have disagreements. It's fine really to make it public, but to ask ChatGPT who's more trustworthy, it just seems like such a poor way to prove your point. But I think what Musk is really trying to do is sway the court of public opinion here. All right, I'm done with this topic. Let's go on to the next one. Next, the sponsor of today's video, Lindy just launched Lindy 3.0. Let me tell you about that. Lindy just launched their biggest update ever, transforming how agents work for you and your team. 
These powerful new features include Autopilot, which gives Lindy the ability to use a computer just like a human would. This unlocks basically any capability within AI agents because they can use all the same tools as you would. And that delivers on the promise of a fully fledged AI employee. Let me show you Autopilot in action. Look at this Lindy agent that actively monitors your X account for spam mentions. It intelligently identifies patterns of spammer behavior and automatically blocks these accounts without requiring any intervention from you. This saves you precious time while keeping your social media presence clean. This is the point of AI agents to free up your time for other work. But that's not all. Autopilot enables Lindy agents to log into the different platforms that you use and execute complex actions on your behalf. And now they just launched Lindy 3.0 and they're giving my audience a special offer. Sign up for Lindy today and get $50 in Lindy credits absolutely free. That's basically like one month of Lindy Pro. You can get that offer by clicking the link below. So check out Lindy, let me know what you think. Thanks again to them for sponsoring this video and now, Back to the video. And next, in some amazing news, Anthropic has upped the context window of Claude Sonnet 4 to 1 million tokens. They are really, I believe, the second frontier model to do so behind Gemini 2.5 Pro. So that is 75,000 lines of code or hundreds of documents in a single request. The Claude family of models is already known for being incredible at coding. It's really many people in the industry's model of choice for their agentic coding software. And now that it supports a million tokens of context, it's going to be that much more powerful. You'll be able to load up entire code bases. 75,000 lines of code is a lot of code. Obviously, there are code bases that are much larger than that, but being able to load up larger chunks of your code base, even if you do have a massive code base, is very beneficial. So long context support is in public beta for API users with tier four and custom rate limits. Broader availability will be rolling out over the coming weeks. And and it's also available in Amazon Bedrock and coming soon to Google Cloud's Vertex. Now the pricing dependent on your context size does change. Check this out. For prompts less than 200,000 tokens, it is $3 per million tokens. For output, 15. Now it is much more expensive for prompts greater than 200,000 tokens, $6 per million and $22.5 per million output tokens. And of course, you can also use prompt caching to help decrease latency and cost. Next, Perplexity has launched video generation. Video generation now available on web, iOS, and Android. Pro subscribers can create five videos per month, which is not much, Max can generate 15 per month with enhanced quality. And although the quotas that you get for generating video are quite low, I kind of understand why generating video is incredibly computationally expensive and thus financially expensive for these companies. So I'm definitely gonna be trying it out. I haven't tried it yet, but I do plan to. Speaking of text to video, you remember Genie 3? Well, we now have an open source version of it from Skywork. Matrix Game 2.0, the first open source, real-time, long sequence, interactive world model. So DeepMind's Genie 3 shook the world with real-time interactive world models. I covered that, it was incredible, but of course we couldn't play with it and it's not open source. Today, Matrix Game 2.0 changes the game. 25 frames per second, minutes long interaction, fully open source. So, some more information about it. Again, real time, 25 frames per second, long sequence, minutes of continuous video. You can move, you can rotate, you can explore the different worlds that are generated, and it has multiple scenes, City, Wild, Temple Run, GTA, anything you can really imagine. So 1,350 hours of interaction Active video from Unreal Engine plus GTA 5 were used to train it, which really doesn't sound like that much, let alone a diverse enough set of data, but I guess it is. The model is only 1.3 billion autoregressive diffusion with action control, and on a single GPU, you can get 25 frames per second. By the way, if you want to see a tutorial about this, let me know in the comments. Skywork goes into detail about how they built it, what went into it, and everything. It's open source, so I'll drop a link in the description below. Check it out. Next, ex-OpenAI researcher Leopold Aschenbrenner, famous for his situational awareness paper, which I covered in depth on this channel and talked about multiple times on this channel, has raised a massive hedge fund. He raised 
1.5 billion dollars for a hedge fund. And here's the article in the Wall Street Journal. Billions flow to new hedge funds focused on AI related bets. 23 year old former open AI researcher quickly amassed more than 1.5 billion for brain trust on AI. And so what is his strategy? His strategy involves betting on global stocks that stand to benefit from the development of AI technology, such as the semiconductor infrastructure and power companies along with investments in a few startups, including Anthropic, which is interesting given he comes from OpenAI. He told investors he plans to offset those with smaller short bets on industries that could get left behind. The Situational Awareness, I guess, fund gained 47% after fees in the first half of the year, which is massive. And so Leopold Ashenbrenner really seems to be writing his Situational Awareness paper, plus his connections and really his position in the AI industry to just raise and invest a ton of money. Next, OpenAI has another insane achievement for their models. The OpenAI reasoning system, although they didn't say specifically what model it is, scored high enough to achieve gold in one of the world's top programming competitions, the IOI, International Olympiad in Informatics, placing first among AI participants. So they scored higher than all but five human participants participants and placed first amongst AI participants. They had five hours for their time limit and 50 submission limit, which is the same as the human participants. And they competed without internet or RAG. This is strictly what is in the model. And as compared to last year, they scored just shy of a bronze medal last year. So this year, basically getting the top score is incredible. Congratulations to OpenAI on this achievement. And from Mistral AI, they are introducing Mistral Medium 3.1. So this is a performance boost, tone improvement, and smarter web searches. Try it now in the chat. Here we can see a multiple point bump in Arena Hard V2, Wild Bench V2, and creative writing. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.